Yeah, yeah, this DJ Who Kid, man. I'm on hiphopwired.com. Hiphopwired.com. Who Kid. Shout out to all my Haitians in Atlanta, if there is any. Sock, pa, se. Pow. Hip Hop Wire, Ice Blue Head, chilling with the legendary DJ Who Kid. What you got popping on, man? No. What I got popping? I'm in Atlanta now, so I have to wear the tightest shirt possible so I could be comfortable with the, the energy and the aura of Atlanta. When I landed today, it made a lot of sense. There was a lot of tight shirts everywhere in the airport, and now I know what the girls be talking about. You know what I'm saying? So I'm comfortable. Everything's good. But other than that, who kids in Atlanta? I'm doing uh, the Monique show with Banks today. So take, you know, I'll do anything. I'll stop my schedule. I'll stop my orgy. I'll stop whatever for Lloyd Banks because the album is hot. I heard most of it already. I got some of it. If you want it now, I'll give it to you. Okay. Just don't tell them I gave it to you. We're going to hold them to that. We're going to hold them to that. So what's next on the mixtape circuit, man? What you got bopping off? Uh, well, right now, you know, I, I currently, like, I got, like, over, like, 10 to 11 mixtapes currently getting done. So they all come out. Usually I drop, like, a good six or seven at the same time. But I'm currently working, like, with Gucci. Uh, I got uh, Tech 9 from uh, Kansas City. Uh, man, I got, like, so many mixtapes. This is this Exhibit, Ice Cube. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ, uh, Yale's mixtape. Uh, we, we, we got Banks mixtape on the side already, but we're waiting for the album to come out. So a lot of bloggers are like trying to kill me. I just did a, a Jim, Jones sample, uh, Jim Jones sampler for the street, so he just gives it away. I think he did like 30,000 copies or something, so he's giving it away okay. to promote his uh, Capo album coming out in January. But uh, still doing like, you know, the usual Snoop Dogg joints, collabos, you know. And then uh, the main thing I'm really doing is my radioplanet.tv. Mm-hmm. I just promote like, uh, it's, it's basically a site that helps every artist out there get marketed the right way and then the combination of my radio show the site and you know I got links with This Is 50 and mm-hmm. mad other blogs because you know all my interviews usually gets scattered around all over the internet you know, we done showcased a few of yours as well. yeah I, you know I, I do I do a lot of artists too but I concentrate more on Hollywood cats because mm-hmm. not only are they hard to get at but I always get like a second side of who they are like I just interviewed like Denise Richards um, mm-hmm. Bruce Willis like, you know, and then they always talk about, like, shit that nobody would ask them. Like, I'm the only one I got Denise Rich to talk about sucking dick for, like, 20 minutes. Wow. So, but that's why, the, but I don't start the shit. They got the energy. They want to, you know, they, they, they see that I'm on Eminem's channel. They want to wild out. And that's what's cool about it. And then me having 50 as a boss, Eminem as a boss, it just makes it a perfect situation. And then I try to balance it out because I still tour heavily overseas mm-hmm. and over here is trying to book me like crazy too because I, I do all the Hollywood parties now okay. like for the premieres and you know so I'm just trying to get more into the you know the just Hollywood shit period because that's where it's at you know that so. was going to be my next question like I know your history you know starting promoting New York artists from early on with the Mob Deep mixtapes and stuff like that mm-hmm. so how did you start how did you branch out to all these other West Coast people people outside of the New York City area uh, I, I said that before because uh, I wanted my mixtapes to be sold like, you know, like down south and west coast and, you know, and even Midwest. But I was only DJ even because I, I, the first artist I DJ for was Juvenile. That's how I met Lil Wayne when he was like, uh, he was just like a little baby, like in Pampers, mm-hmm. shit in his ass. You know what I'm saying? But back in those days, you could even ask Lil Wayne, like, I would fly and meet these cats and get exclusives and then they were shocked they were like yo who kid is here like from New York what's going on here from like Trick Daddy to you know even like the early T.I.'s like T.I. you know he I met him like years ago in Atlanta when I came in because I was filming for my Rewind DVD mm-hmm. and I, I came up with the concept of uh, getting freestyle videos and put them all compile them and do video mixtapes that's okay. where you see Smack and all these guys came about because once we did Rewind we sold 300,000 and it got cease and desist lawsuits galore because I had like Nelly everybody in there freestyling talking about weed so it was like a cool mixtape video like a video mixtape for the cars because the reason I learned that is when I went to Atlanta like all all my Mexican homies out there they had like the lowriders but they had DVD players in their cars and I was like I put two and two together I was like yo this DVD system shit is kind of hot maybe I could do a DVD mixtape that's where Rewind came from and then now it just like blew up. It's like 10,000 like DVD bullshits, but now the internet took, o- took over. Mm-hmm. So the DVD shit is kind of dead now. People want shit immediately. 
and I started a magazine called Power, but then I learned from Vibe Magazine and Double XL, like, you know, magazine world is kind of iffy, you know, and a lot of them are coming down. So I, I transformed my Power Magazine into RadioPlan.tv, where you get up to the minute, and it's all video. I don't want no, because, you know, I know black people don't read and shit, so they want to see shit, they want to laugh. I do, like, too many things to talk about, like, you know, but I try to boil it down to just, I figured it out, like, it's all about artists, relationships, because I'm just privileged to know, like, everybody is easy to call them. I don't to go to publicists, and then I, I find my way to even do that with stars, too. So it's all about artist relationship. If you don't know them, you're not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You just got to do free shit for them. They respect you, and then they'll hook you up anytime they see you. And then a lot of them I knew them before they blew up. Okay. Even right now, a lot of people think that, oh, you got to go after Jeezy, or you got to go after, you know, all the big cats and shit. Nah, you got to go after the, the next level niggas that's on their way up there. Mm. So all these, like, Wiz Khalifas and fucking J. Coles, I mean, you see I do a lot of interviews with them. I know who's, like, next in line, like Big right. Sean. And these guys be selling out, like, House of Blues and shit like that, because that, that's, like, the next shit. Like, you know... It, you just got. You just can't be stupid being a DJ like the way I am. I'm more into the marketing thing. I'm not the cutting, scratching DJ. I'm the marketing dude. I market every rapper. That's why a lot of people, you know, give me brown paper bags to do their mixtapes. Cause like I met Soldier Boy at fucking McDonald's. This motherfucker gave me fries with extra ketchup, man. Like and look where he has. Like he's like out of here, you know. And then it's, uh, like I say, you know, everybody's not super lyrical or ill, but you just never know. It all depends on the situation. Okay. And they use my name just to like get the, you know. The branding, and then plus, the way I listen to music is totally different too, because I am a greedy nigga. I want to sell whoever I got. So I make sure the music is hot. I tell a nigga to do shit over, organize the shit the right way. I mean, I'm not perfect every time, but I'm 60% all right. 60% of the artists that fuck with me are famous. Okay. All those people out there, except Jay-Z and Dre, would probably be the only ones I didn't work with yet. Okay. But everybody went through my Keyword is yet. Yeah. Every yeah. Dre is like the next in line. Okay. Jay Z is like too much of like aluminous and shit. I don't really want to deal with him. But other than that, everybody went through me from Kanye. I mean I mean I even leaked the the video of when I first had Kanye and just cursed him out and then look where he's at. Some people gotta take criticism. If you say you're whack, you, they take it in a different way, but they change themselves. Sometimes right. people call me, yo, thank God you told me this shit was bullshit. Now nah, look, I had to switch up. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody got to just, you, if you got a yes man in your crew, fire all of them. Yes man is the downfall of every label. All these niggas around y'all that be dancing every time you say something, they like your jewelry or they, every song you put out, they agree to, fire him immediately. Cause you can't be fucking, not every record is hot. You right. need a nigga that's real with you to tell you, yo, this shit's garbage. And then you be like, oh shit, fire him. But at the end of the day, he might, he might he probably save your life. Yeah, yeah, this DJ Who Kid, man. I'm on hiphopwired.com. Hiphopwired.com. Who Kid. Shout out to all my Haitians in Atlanta, if there is any. Sock, pa, say. Pow.